Hamdi Chambers. I'm from the Royal Air Force, uh, and my role within the Air Force is police. Uh, you may be thinking, what do I know about IT? Well, uh, within the Air Force, we do have our computer role, which is our cyberspace communication specialist. Uh, however, we do have other roles that are very heavily involved with the IT world. As previous uh, presenters have said, uh, there's a lot going on in the IT space and you need to make sure you've got your infrastructure there, you need your uh, security elements there to make sure you're protecting everything you've got. And you also need your people that are actually using the systems as well. So within the police, uh, we take care of make sure everything's being used correctly and legally and make sure that the security is at the right level to protect the information that we're looking after, especially considering a lot of the information we have is regarding the missions we're flying, where our aircraft and personnel are going. So in the wrong hands, it's actually valuable information. So we've got to make sure we uh, protect that. So within the RF Police, we've got an area that's called the County Intelligence. They will look after the accreditation of systems. This looks after all the making sure they've got the right protections, make sure they've got the right encryptions, make sure any personal devices that have been linked to the system are protected as well. Uh, so we look at that side. Uh, like I said, our main IT role is the cyberspace communication specialists. They will do pretty much everything from setting up your computer network system. So putting your computers together, setting up your laptops so they're connected to the system, setting up your base stations, creating uh, local area networks, all the way up to your ethical hacking, script writing, uh, and all that fancy stuff. Um, and then we've also got our intelligence guys. They use all the uh, computers uh, and the computer systems to delve into gain intelligence from different networks, uh, gain inf information, whether it's looking at uh, maps, uh, listening to radio frequencies. They'll use that information, utilize computer systems to put it in a nice package so they can then brief on missions and all that uh, sort of stuff. So with us, we are slightly different to your standard IT company or uh, IT organization. We are military first. However, you can choose your role. So if it is the compute, uh, the cyberspace compute, uh, specialist sort of role that you're after. Um, for us, if you've got English, maths and the science at grade C and above or grade four and above on the new grading system, you are eligible to apply for the role. You can apply for the role as of the age of 16. Uh, we still, on average, the applications take about six months. So if you are in your final year of school, you can start applying sort of the April time before your exams, and we can start processing your uh, applications then. Uh, we, you won't be able to get into the Air Force until after you've received your uh, grades, but we can get you uh, quite a way through the application process. Um, so why go for a career in the RAF? Well, if you go for a role like the Cyberspace Communication Specialist, all the qualifications you get are your Microsoft qualifications, exactly the same as you'd get in any sort of IT industry. So yeah, so the qualifications pretty much identical, if not maybe a little higher in certain areas because of the specific work that we do. So it can set you up to a career in uh, computers after the military as well as in it. The other benefits are you get to do adventurous training uh, the RAF tried to promote that you do at least one day adventurous training a year. We have adventurous training centres all over the world. We've got one in Cyprus, Germany, there's what Wales, Scotland, England, obviously. Uh, and we also do adventurous training trips overseas to America, uh, Malta, and even as far as the Philippines. Uh, adventurous training could be anything from hill walking, mountain biking, uh, rock climbing, parachuting, pretty much absolutely anything sort of that the adrenaline junkies go for. Um, this may not be for you. Uh, you may want to uh, further yourself educationally and uh, the RAF do look to help support you in that. Uh, for me, uh, I managed to get myself a degree with the RAF. Uh, they helped me apply to the university, which I decided to go to Staffordshire University. Uh, I paid £800 for my degree and that was for everything the rest the RAF covered. And whilst I was doing my degree, the RAF supported me. They made sure I knew where, uh, the books that I needed I was, that were made available to me. 
they also had someone there that could help me to go through the simple things like how to set up uh, an essay, which for me, I've never done before. So it's quite nice to have someone there support me to just point me in the right direction and help me out where needed. Uh, they were also there to help me sort of plan my time so I was able to uh, make sure I, I was getting everything done on time and uh, to the correct standard. Uh, so, yeah, so obviously I've gone through a bit of the sporting side, I've gone through the education. Uh, the other thing is when you uh, join the role for us, you do go on what's called an apprenticeship. However, we don't do our apprenticeships like most organisations where you'll come in on the apprenticeship wage, which the national average is about £9,000. With this, you'll start on a full wage. By the end of your first 12 months, you'll be on £18,000 a year. Out of this, you have to pay for your accommodation, which is roughly about £60 a month. So of that £18,000, we'll say you're getting £1,200 a month uh, actually in your pocket. Take off your £60 for your accommodation. You've got uh, one, £1,100 literally to do with what you want to feed yourself go buy yourself a car go out and eat buy clothes phones uh, game consoles literally the money is yours so you do have more expendable income um, because of the support that the military give you uh, where else can i go with this and um, the other thing with our role is you get to travel with the role so say if you come out and you want to go work with the F-35s, because we do have our uh, cyberspace communications specialists attached to them because they are pretty much a flying computer. Uh, they'll be the ones that input all the data and make sure it gets downloaded so it could be assessed by the intelligence guys. Wherever our, their F-35 goes, our intelligence analyst goes. So if they go to America on a training exercise, our cyberspace guys goes with them. If they go to Eastern Europe or the Middle East, the uh, cyberspace guys goes with them. And the other thing is, we don't like to park our expensive aircraft in dangerous locations. So generally you'll be traveling to quite nice locations, areas that you'll probably be able to go do a bit of exploring during your downtime. So yes, you're away from home. Yes, you'll be in different countries, but you'll also get opportunities to explore them. So you get to develop yourself, do a bit of travel and, do, and be getting paid for it whilst you're there. So there is quite a lot of benefits uh, with the role um, with regards to the IT uh, we try to keep up to date as much as possible and um, we uh, use window 10s uh, this is the way we're going at the minute uh, as a few of the uh, presenters have said previously uh, we, we use a lot of cloud uh, storage for our information because it means no matter where we are what unit we're at or where we are in the country or overseas we're able to access the information. If we're uh, joint working on any work with uh, personnel from other areas, we can work on that document without having to be in the same location. So it, it increases productivity and it means that we can do things a lot quicker with a lot less people. So it is streamlining our industry. It is making us more effective and with, uh, the development of uh, computer systems and the increased knowledge of our computer uh, cyberspace communication specialists, uh, we're only going to improve in that area. Um, so I've told you a bit about some of the computer roles, uh, some of the benefits. Uh, I've told you what to me are the benefits of the world travel and the moving around, but for some people this is negatives. Uh, and I'll also talk about uh, a few of the other negatives because I'm not going to I don't want you to come in under the false impression that it's all positive and it's all rosy. Uh, highly likely is you will be away from home. When you initially join, you'll go down to RF Holton and uh, do a 10 week training program. After that, you'll go do your phase two training. So depending on what trade you choose, it could be anywhere in the country. And after this, it, you will get posted to where there are slots. You do get to put in your preferences. So if you specifically want to work with the F-35 and there's a availability there, highly likely you will get that role. If there's no availability, they'll look for similar roles doing a similar job. So you may not get to the job you want initially. You may have to wait for a second or third posting. Now, our postings, they can last anywhere from uh, two years to five years. Uh, so if you get somewhere really like the job, you can say, do you know what? I want to stay here for the full five years. Or 
on the on the flip side, you could get somewhere and be like, this ain't the job for me. I want to go to another job. However, if I do this for two years, hopefully there's a slot available there. But once you are in, you can work with your career manager and say, look, this is where I want to go. When our slots come available, he will look and he will give you rough dates. So then you can try and tie in the end of your uh, first or second deployment or uh, posting to so that when you're finishing that slot's available so you can then get posted into it. Uh, this does work quite well, um, but it's all about you as an individual getting involved with your career, taking the opportunities that are available to you and trying to shape it the way you want it to go. If you wait and allow other people to do, do it for you, the highly likely is you won't be getting what you want. I'm not saying you will get what you want or you're guaranteed to get what you want, but if you get involved and try and uh, shape your own career, you're more likely to get to, to the roles you want, to do the jobs you want, so then you're happier at work, more motivated and more productive. Um, so that's it from me. Uh, hopefully I've been of use. If you do have uh, any questions or want any further information, please visit our website uh, or Google RF Careers. We've got over 60 different roles. So if IT is maybe something you want to get involved in, but you don't want a role that's all about it, have a look at the different roles because pretty much every role we have nowadays involves a computer at some point. But thank you for listening.